Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, Steve, of course. Um, shooting this little video to try to make sure we're all on the same page with respect to um, how we should be giving each other comments uh, in this assess phase. Uh, I want to be clear right from the very beginning that I really want everybody to have what, what um, scientists would call a pro-social mindset here. You know what antisocial is. Antisocial is when people do things that actually cause problems for society. They pull people apart. Pro-social are behaviors that in fact bring a community together. Um, so in a general community, they could include things like charitable acts and volunteering. Those are very pro-social behaviors that tend to make uh, a community stronger. In this case, what we want to engage in is literally helping one another to improve. Uh, and that has to be the spirit of all the feedback that you give one another. You really want to be thinking, um, I'm looking at these peers' work, but not to judge. Uh, and certainly not just to point out problems or flaws, but rather very specifically to help this student improve their work by sharing a, a different perspective on their work. Um, so with that in mind, uh, let me just say that whenever we write anything or whenever we create anything, there's a certain weird psychological thing that happens that once we've said it or once we've written it, um, it's very hard for us to go back and look at it and think about how we could have said it or written it differently. But that's a really important skill to, to eventually get, that notion of, of what we call self-reflective thought um, and formative thought, we'll sometimes call, of, of how we could improve something that we've created. Um, one of the best ways to develop it is to recruit other people to kind of be your eyes for you in, in the early steps. And that's really what this phase is all about. So the way it'll work now is you'll log into Peer Scholar and just like you did before, just by clicking from the Blackboard link, you'll come in, but now when you see the assignment bar, the assess phase will be lit up. When you click on the assess phase, you'll first see some instructions. Um, the rubric will still be there, and I'd ask you to look again at the rubric because you, you thought about this rubric when you were creating your own assignment, but now you want to think about it when you're looking at the assignments of your peers. So check out that rubric again as a first step and kind of think about it all. Now, when you're um, okay with the instructions in the rubric, you press Save and Next in the bottom right corner, and you will come to an interface where you'll see a number of tabs uh, with a peer, like Peer 1, Peer 2, etc., across the top. What, when you click on each of those tabs, what you will see is the submission that one of your peers submitted, anonymously presented, so you know no identifying information, all you'll see is what they actually wrote. And you'll see a number of these for a number of different peers. And what we really want you to do is to assess your peers. And we're asking you to do this for a number of reasons. Uh, one is the pro-social idea that I've already highlighted. But the second really important reason is you will find that as you do this, you are engaging your mind in, in ways we've really designed the software um, to do. So you're going to be thinking critically, you're going to be thinking creatively, you're going to have to communicate your ideas. All of these are skills that you will use the rest of your life. And so one of the core reasons I have you doing the Peer Scholar assignment is because you are exercising those skills um, and that's the only way they're going to improve. And so we've really designed this um, to be a gym for the mind of a sort, something that will exercise all these cognitive skills in ways that will benefit you all through life. And so that really works when you do it right. So what do I mean by do it right? Here's what I recommend. First blush, I I've asked you guys to create arguments. So I think the first thing you should do is just read the first peer's argument and kind of think about, at a very gut level, how good was it? You know, how much did it actually make you think? As an argument goes, don't worry too much about sentence structure or APA formatting or any of that stuff. Worry about the content and presentation of the argument and kind of ask yourself, wow, how, how powerful was that argument? And how efficient was it? And how clear was it? Um, and so kind of think about that. Then do the same for peer two and for peer three, etc. So first just look at those arguments, think about them, and ultimately in your mind try to think, okay, which one was best and which is next best, etc. Now you may also at some point want to look at your own argument, which you'll see there's a tab for that too. 
Um, and so it's very, this is a very nice way of kind of getting a sense of where your argument fits with your classmates, something you don't usually get to see. Um, but, but I encourage you to do that too, to bring in your own argument and think where that fits. Okay, so that's a start. That kind of gets you into the, into the right mindset. Now, more specifically, here's what I would like you to do for each assignment. First of all, give it a rating. This rating will count for nothing. Okay, um, it's really a communication tool. It's the first vague way for you to tell your peer, you know what, out of 10, your argument feels like a six or seven to me. And by the way, don't be afraid to use low numbers. Um, you know, communicate as, as honestly as you can what you think the quality was. Again, those marks won't count, but they will tell the person, you know, where you felt their argument fit. Okay, then, there's two other things to do. One is to um, add a positive comment. So highlight something this person's already doing well, because we want to we want to reinforce those those good behaviors, right? So tell them something they're already doing well. That'll let them know that in the future they should keep doing that. So so that's the first one. But then the second and the most critical is the constructive comment. And here um, I and the TAs will be looking for two things. So let me get to those two things indirectly. Here's the process I would like you to go through. Read that peer's argument again. Think of all the ways it could be improved. Um, but then zero in on the one thing. If this person was going to change one thing, what one thing do you think they should change to have the biggest impact on the quality of their work? Okay, so imagine all the things that could be changed, but zero in on that one that you think is, hey, if you change this, you could really improve your work a lot. And now, first thing I want you to do is explain what that current, I'll call it a problem is, or, or a weakness. You know, explain as well as you can, here's the, here's the thing that I think you should consider changing. That's one thing I want you to do. The second thing is to then also give this person some idea of how you think they should go about changing it. So don't just say this is a problem, but say, okay, this is a problem and here's what I recommend. And I don't, I'm not suggesting you recommend, you know, writing, rewriting something for them or doing anything that concrete, but give them some idea of how you think they could do it better. Okay, let me back up a little bit here. So the idea here is the gym that I'm trying to put you through here is to evaluate these different arguments um, to try to figure out what's better than what and then to try to put into words why it's better. So I'm asking you to think critically about this stuff. I'm asking you to think creatively to provide solutions to your peers and I'm asking you to communicate all of that as effectively as you can. So. Let, let, me, let me talk the language that most undergraduates really understand. The quality of your comments, the quality of the comments you give to your peers is worth three out of three uh, on this assignment. Sorry, is worth three points on the assignment. When the TAs are evaluating your work, they're going to look for exactly what I described. So they're going to look especially at your constructive comment. That's what you should worry about most. And they're going to say, did this person highlight a problem, a weakness? Um, and is it clear what that weakness is? And did they propose a way of addressing that weakness? Okay, so you have six peers to do this, four. So imagine each of those worth half a mark, where those are the two things that the TA is gonna look for. Is there a nice clear explanation of the problem and a nice clear proposed way to solve this? And again, higher level thoughts, not your sentence structure is poor. Think about the argument and the compellingness of the argument. Focus on that level. That's what the TAs are going to be focusing on when they grade as well. Uh, and so that's where I want, that's the critical thinking level. That's where I want you guys' minds to be. All right? So hopefully that's as clear as possible. You should be able to predict pretty well what your grade will be on this by just asking yourself, did I clearly voice a problem, not five problems, a problem, um, and did I uh, pro provide some sort of guidance about how to fix that problem? If you did that for all six of the peers, you'll be in good shape. Okay, that's what we're asking you to do. All right, um, cool. I'm going to give you a little bit of ghost of future, of ghost of peer scholar future, um, just so you understand the process. 
while you're doing this to six of your peers, let's say, your assignment will become one of the assignments that six of your peers assess. Okay, so what you're doing to them, they're doing to you. So I, I ask, you know, that golden rule. What you will ultimately get is their feedback, and you will now be given a chance to improve your assignment based on their feedback. Uh, and that will be an easy and cool thing to do if they give you good quality feedback. That's what you're going to be hoping for in the next phase. So I ask you all to kind of think about what you hope uh, what you, how you hope your peers will treat your work and that you now treat their work in that same respectful way. And let me just highlight that respectful and come back full circle to the pro-social. Okay? While you're doing all this, keep in mind that the central goal is to have you guys help each other improve. Um, that's what this is really about. And so the way you word things when you're providing feedback to your peers, make sure that's the kind of spirit. Here's how I think you could do better. Not, here's the problem, here's what's crappy about your piece. That kind of feedback tends to just not, it tends to get ignored because it, it, it raises emotions that make it hard for people to listen. But if instead you have that pro-social mentality, then um, you, your feedback in general that you give to people will be more effective. They're more likely to listen to it. All right. By the way, one last thing. In the next phase, you will also be asked explicitly to rate how useful each piece of feedback you received was. And that will also happen to the feedback you provide. So once you provide it, the students on the other side will rate how useful their feedback was. So the TAs will know that as well as being able to you know, look directly at the feedback you gave. So all this to say, Take this seriously, because if you do this well, if everybody does this well, then Peer Scholar really works well, uh, and you can learn a lot from it. And so that's my main message. All right, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I know I'm kind of make, you know, pulling your heads all over the place and, and asking you to do things you've probably never done before. I love that, you know, to, when, when students come and they say they're confused, and I don't know whether to do this, and I've been reading about that and thinking about this. I'm like, excellent. Perfect. That's exactly where I want you to be. Um, so, you know, appreciate that too. Appreciate that it's a challenging task and try your best. Everything will work out fine. All right, shutting up now. See you later. Have a good one.